I decided I wanted to extend my season, hopefully be able to harvest some greens through winter, even in the snow. So um, over here I have a cold frame that I bought and set up um, just last night. did here was stabilize the frame um, in a bit of soil in her raised bed and then wet it so that it would kind of lock in so you see now it doesn't really move forward or back and then she can control the temperature by raising and lowering it if we have another freaky warm day mm -hmm. or in midday when she comes to harvest um, she can open this up and kind of if it's getting too hot she can modulate the temperature yeah, and so this is super these light panels rain. actually they just pop on really easily really easily watch this um, but then they have these little props so if it's a really warm day I'm gonna leave them like this um, this is gonna be an automatic opener actually in the middle you can just buy them they're like a greenhouse window opener um, and then you know you can close it when it's cold outside and keep everything nice and snug in there but you don't want to have some airflow because you don't want to wind up with like too much moisture you might get mildew or mushrooms growing in there exactly um, so you want to kind of keep some air when it's nice out so today we're just taking these ones off so that we can plant the seeds and then we'll tuck them in for a little um, cozy germination snooze I brought yeah. just a couple of garlics to try this is a little bit of an experiment I like to go outside the box garlic is usually planted in most parts of the United States by mid-October but I want to try growing it in a cold frame because the cold frame um, adds a whole zone, USDA zone. Katie had said this is zone 7A. Mm -hmm. 7A. So, you know, we can try growing it and see um, if it can sprout in this cold frame and then Katie can harvest it in the summertime or maybe for early spring garlic. Mm -hmm. um, there's two basic, two basic groups of garlic. There's a lot of different varieties, but I just want to say a couple of things about garlic. There's hard neck, and soft neck. You can tell it's a hard neck because it's a really stiff kind of middle thing. The hard necks are hardier um, than the soft necks. Now, if you're gonna grow garlic, buy them from a garlic, a garlic a bulb supplier. Don't use the ones from the market because they are sometimes sprayed with chemicals that retard their sprouting because the, the, the vegetable seller doesn't want you to, right. your garlic to sprout, but you want your garlic to sprout. So what's really nice is um, I found a, a source called uh, Ches um, Keen Garlic in Wisconsin, and this one's called Chesnook Red. So we're gonna try growing garlic in a cold frame. Awesome. So that happens. And then if we have room, I have a few little things that I just, you know, I maybe just want one or two plants of. Garlic in the corner here? Okay, great. I'm gonna make a tag because I love knowing where things are. So the garlic pointy side up, and you only have to put it an inch below the surface. And hopefully in this cold frame, it'll set roots this fall, winter, and then germinate um, in the spring. It wants good, rich soil. If you don't have good soil that's nicely free draining, you don't get nice sized bulbs. And then I'm gonna space them about six inches apart. So I really, if I only need, you know, an inch, I just can use my finger. The soil is so soft. And then I just cover it. And then six inches apart, just like that. It's kind of just going right in there. And that's it. That's literally all you have to do. Well, okay. And I just, yep. So put that in so the I'm bag. I'm going to dedicate. So seeds don't go bad unless, you know, they are, if they rot or, but in this tiny packet, there's 250 seeds. So, so the, usually what happens is the germination rate just goes down. So if it's a year or two old or even older, they're probably still viable. Um, they just, you know, have a lower germination rate rather than 100% it might go down to 50 or 60. The seed companies are not allowed to sell them after the year that they've been produced. So the fall is also a good time to buy seeds because we know if you know that they're still viable, you get really good bargains. And yeah. you're not gonna run into these supply chain problems that we experienced in 2020 in the great seed panics um, where a lot <laughs> yes. of things were just <laughs> out of stock, unavailable. It's like, if yeah. you wanted carrots, I went to the local nursery and I was like, do you have any radish seeds? And they were just like, they laughed at me. They were like, no, there are no more carrots. There are no more radishes. Yeah. 
So I've gotten into this kind of seed hoarding feeling yeah. now. So if you buy them in the fall, not only are they cheaper, but you have them in spring, you don't have to wait, you know? Yeah. Now one mistake that people make, and you probably know this, Katie, is that they bury the seed too deeply. Mm. These kinds of greens barely cover them with soil. Barely. All right, and they'll germinate better. Okay. So I'm just gonna barely, barely just make little indentations here and scatter them densely like here and just really tuck them in. This will be here. And then the garlic doesn't need a lot of room, so I'm just going to make a little bed here for this kale. 